Hello, this is Stephanie, Talk Tales and Trivia. In this week's episode, I had the extreme pleasure of researching, watching, and analyzing the very dystopian in nature, the planet of the apes. I should say the 1968 version of the planet of the apes. Well, it's one of my all-time favorite movies, I do admit. And there were four movies back-to-back in The Planet of the Apes back in 1968, and they were all very popular. But today I'm going to focus on the very first The Planet of the Apes made in 1968. Because, as we all know, let's face it, the first movie of any franchise is always the best. The first A Planet of the Apes movie stars one of my favorite actors, Charlton Heston, and Roddy McDowell and Linda Harrison, an all-star cast. Now, I'm fully aware that The War of the Planet of the Apes is out in movie theaters right now. But if you want to see where it all began, you must start at the beginning. And I am going to find out the ultimate question that I've had lately, is The Planet of the Apes a dystopian movie? Hmm. Well, I looked back at my notes for episode 43, Dystopian Everything, and I find some important points in that episode. A matter of fact, if you missed that episode 43, Dystopian Everything, it is a great episode, I do have to admit, And it actually is one of the most downloaded episodes that I have done. Let's investigate some of the points in that episode and relate them to the planet of the apes. Well, of course, dystopias are often characterized by dehumanization, totalitarian governments, environmental disasters, and characteristics associated with cataclysmic disasters or decline in societies. So yes, I would say that that has a lot to do with The Planet of the Apes. On the dystopian.com website, it says this about The Planet of the Apes movie, and I read, quote, Complex sociological themes run through this science fiction classic about three astronauts marooned on a futuristic planet where apes rule and humans are slaves, highly intellectual simians that can both walk upright and talk. They have even established a class system, dystopian, and a political structure, dystopian. The astronauts suddenly find themselves part of a devalued species, very dystopian, trapped and imprisoned by the apes, dystopian, end quote. The films are apocalyptic and dystopian, there's no doubt about it, and portray the errors, tensions leading to world destruction. With all this information, how else could one see this? So yes, there are key elements and signs in the 1968 version that makes it a dystopian classic movie. Now, like many movies, and as I talked about in the last episode, there are books that do become movies, and The Planet of the Apes was one of them. Did you know that? Hmm. Reconstructed from a 1963 novel, Monkey Planet, or The Planet of the Apes. The original The Planet of the Apes was based on the novel by Pierre Boyer. It is a more pointed commentary on humanity's propensity to self-destruct. It's loosely based. Let's just put it that way. Of course, the screenplay really had more action and a little more character development. Planet of the Apes has received particular attention for its treatment of race, which critics consider its primary theme, and I certainly do too. Critics have also written on its Cold War and animal rights themes as well. I can see all of that. The older movies have had a wide influence on subsequent books, films, media, art, as well as popular culture and political discourse. We can see that, obviously. The screenplay for the original Planet of the Apes was co-written by none other than Rod Serling. Did you know that? That would be a good trivia question. You know, Rod Serling 
was, of course, The Twilight Zone. One of Serling's early Twilight Zone episodes, Death Wish, had a loosely similar plot as the Planet of the Apes movie. In that Twilight Zone episode, it was about an astronaut that turned to a savage after crash landing on a planet that he discovers a little too late is the planet Earth. You know, in all these episodes and movies, the way it depicts an odd world in the opening scenes, you know something is wrong. In the movie, the music was very odd. I don't know if you, if there's some out there that remember it being very tinny, like, "Eh, eh, eh." it wasn't really even music. It was just, I don't know, maybe 10 drums or something. Maybe someone knows, or we can look it up online. On the tour.com website, I read, quote, famously, the Planet of the Apes ends with the massive revelation that Taylor played by Charlton Heston, the lead astronaut, has been on Earth the entire time. It's such a bizarre but wonderful twist, isn't it? Even if you know this is coming, the revelation that the Statue of Liberty is buried in the sand and that this was Earth that he was on is really quite a fantastic and weird discovery. I was fascinated by that from the very first time I watched The Planet of the Apes, which was a long time ago. Not only did the movie do well at the box office in 1968, but there was an animated series in 1975, and it was a half-hour Saturday morning cartoon titled Return to the Planet of the Apes. I don't really remember that. But then there were Marvel Comics, the Planet of the Apes magazines that were published in 1974 to 1977. It was really a craze. There were also toys, building sets, trading cards, you name it, costumes, Halloween costumes, I remember. And my very favorite, the Planet of the Apes lunchbox. I think I was the only girl that had that. Now, get this. The original action figures sold by Mego beginning in 1973 were the first toys sold as film tie-ins. Do you know how big that is? How huge that is? And they proved popular and inspired the rise of action figures based on popular culture franchises. How much do you think my little the Planet of the Apes action figures are worth that I have been collecting? Hmm, I wonder. Well, that's very interesting because without the Planet of the Apes coming out and Mago building or making the original action figures, there would be no action figures. So that's very important and interesting, I think. And so now we have toys that are film tie-ins and that make tons of money for the film as well. Now, If you are into podcasts, which a lot of you are, I typed in the Planet of the Apes and I found a few, not many, but interestingly enough, and I don't know if this is a new feature of Apple Podcasts, but I have never seen it before. When I typed in the Planet of the Apes, the podcasts that have something, either an episode or mention the Planet of the Apes, comes up. Now, that is very interesting, and I think it's a new feature. I'm not quite sure. But there is also a particular podcast that is about the Planet of the Apes, and it is entitled Talking Apes TV, a Planet of the Apes podcast, which brings you two guys with a lively conversation about the live-action and animated TV series. Now, this podcast started in 2014, And their last episode, I think, was just a couple of weeks ago, where they were wrapping up the series, talking about the series. So I don't know what's going to happen with the podcast itself, but it is very interesting, and it is very well done, so I do recommend it highly. 
But don't forget also typing in the Planet of the Apes, and you can see different episodes of different podcasts that mention the Planet of the Apes. And now it's time for my tale for this episode with Stephanie. When I was about 10, WPIX Channel 11 had Sunday movies on. I don't know that many people know about those Sunday movies, but I sure remember them. My mother and sister went to dinner, and I was alone in the house as my father built the deck that surrounded the house that I grew up in. As it was getting later and later at night, I was watching The Planet of the Apes and enjoying it. But then it got kind of scary. But I was still intrigued, fascinated by what I was seeing. Oh, I did run out to my father and say, I'm scared. I'm watching a really scary movie. And his solution was for me to turn it off. But I couldn't. I was so hooked at that point. And at that point, I didn't realize it, but it created a lifetime of enjoyment with the Planet of the Apes. It really made quite an impression on me. And to this day, I will always remember that Sunday night on WPIX Channel 11 when I watched my first Planet of the Apes movie that I've ever seen. Now, on to something that is a little different. In August, the 23rd through the 25th, there is something that podcasters can enjoy fully. Podcast Movement 17 is going on in August between the 23rd and 25th, and it is going to be a great event. All the podcasters are getting together and learning and having fun, and honing in on what they want to know. The reason I'm bringing this up is there are a couple of tickets left for podcasters, but I also want to bring it up because it helps podcasters become better podcasters so their listeners enjoy their podcasts more. So I do think that is an important point, that it's not just for the podcaster, it's for the listener that we go to conventions like this. So it's important. And so my podcast friends out there that are listening really should be going to Podcast Movement 17. It will be a great time. We're going to have fun. We're going to learn a lot. And we will bring home all the things that we have learned and into our production studios to become better podcasters so our listeners enjoy our podcasts more. That's so important. I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast, this episode on the Planet of the Apes, 1968 original version of the Planet of the Apes. My question to you is, do you like the Planet of the Apes? Is it one of your favorite movies like it is one of mine? Do you like the original version? I'd love to know. You can always reach us at TalkTalesAndTrivia at gmail.com or go to Twitter at TalkTales, etc. That's TalkTales ETC, Facebook, TalkTales and Trivia, and you can go to TalkTalesAndTrivia.com to listen to past episodes. I recommend episode 43, Dystopian Everything, and you can read our blog posts. That is it for our episode this week, and we will see you next week. With another fine episode, our research team is working feverishly on getting that episode ready. See ya!